Hi, I'm Adam Collings from Pitt and Cherry, one of the developers of Asset Assist. In this session, I'll be joined by Hamish Murphy and Juyong Kim, and we're going to be talking about what Asset Assist can do for you. So the first logical question is, what is Asset Assist? Asset Assist is an asset management and inspection system developed internally by Pitt and Sherry and used internally by our staff as well as licensed out to external clients. So for a little bit of history, uh, the software was birthed out of two separate software products, Bridge Assist and Road Assist. And over time, they merged together to become Asset Assist as we know it today. So what's the philosophy behind the software? Well, that can be best described by these three icons from our branding. Engineering and technical advice, predictive insight, and risk clarity. So what do we mean when we talk about engineering and technical advice? We're talking about putting our intellect into the software. So how do we do this? Well, we do it by being clever where we can be and being generic where we need to be. Uh, there are a lot of asset management systems out there developed by software companies. But Pitt & Cherry is not a software company, we're an engineering company. So if you look at asset management systems, there's a bit of a spectrum. At one end, there's very dedicated systems that know a lot about a specific type of asset. And they have a lot of um, engineering knowledge, a lot of expert intellect in there. But you ask them to manage a different type of asset outside their area of expertise, and they don't know what to do with it. On the other hand, you've got very generic systems, which are like a big spreadsheet where you define your own fields, but the system can't really do much with those fields because it doesn't know what they mean, it's just data. What we try to do is not so much to be in the middle, but to have a foot in each camp. So if you look at our bridge module, for example, we've got a lot of experience with bridges at Pitt and Cherry. So you'll find lots of extra functionality and some cleverness in there that will be really useful to you. But say you want to use the software to manage your artwork assets from your local art gallery. Well, Assetsys doesn't really know much about art, but you can still define your artwork assets um, in the generic way, like those other systems, and you have the flexibility to still put that information into the same system. So one example of some of that intellect that we've put into the system is our predictive modeling tool. As you can see here, there's a screenshot of a graph, and this line is steadily declining. This is showing how the condition and therefore the value of an asset is degrading over time and we can predict this into the future based on a curve. Now you'll notice there that the the green bar that's uh, an expenditure in this case it's a capital replacement uh, so you can see there the value goes right back up to near new condition uh, and then begins the process again. Now that's because the entire asset was replaced at that point. Uh, but you can do much smaller expenditures of maintenance and that will make a, a smaller impact on the value of the asset. You can also see that dotted line that continues on. That's showing how the asset would have continued to deteriorate had we not intervened. Now you can run this over your network of assets, so it's not just about looking at a, at a single asset, but you can use it to answer questions like, uh, which assets should I invest in? Which ones should I replace? Which ones should I maintain and repair? Um, those kind of questions are really important to asset owners. Uh, some other examples of the intellect that we put into the system uh, come under our risk clarity banner. So we have a bridge barrier assessment module. Now there are a lot of bridges out there in Australia that don't have sufficient barriers either side to protect the cars from going off the side of the bridge. Uh, this can be a very serious uh, safety issue, and there have been deaths associated with this. The trouble is that asset owners may not always know um, what height of barrier is required for a given bridge. They may not know how to calculate that. They may not have the in-house expertise uh, to answer that question. So in Asset Assist, all of that knowledge is in the software. So users can enter in some information that can be gathered through an inspection, and then Asset Assist will calculate what kind of barriers the bridge needs, and then compare those to the barriers that are currently there and show any discrepancy between the two. Uh, another example is our heavy vehicle route assessment tool. And this is another one of those uh, issues where it's a very important safety issue. Um, imagine you've got a big crane and you need to get it to a worksite. 
but you might have to cross several bridges to get there. Now you want to know that if you're going to drive this big crane over the bridge, that it's going to be able to support the weight and not collapse underneath it. And again, this is the kind of question that is often quite difficult for an asset owner to answer unless they have that in-house expertise to calculate it. So Asset Assist has a module which will simulate driving that vehicle over the bridge and then calculating the forces that are exerted on the bridge and then comparing those against the forces the bridge was designed to handle and showing where you might have some problems. Now these kind of tools, um, a, a client can license Asset Assist and run the software and they can use the software to get the answers for themselves. Alternatively, they can come to Pitt and Sherry um, and ask us uh, in a consultancy um, point of view uh, to provide those answers to them, in which case we have the tool here that we can use to provide that answer in a very cost-effective manner. So uh, it's a win for everyone involved. So let's talk about the major asset types that the software can handle. So you can see on the left here we have our linear assets. Now these have come from Road Assist. So we have road, pathway, and then custom linear assets such as flood levees, railway tracks, or sewer pipes. Then we have our structure assets. These have come from Bridge Assist. So we have our bridge, our culvert, and then other could be like a marine asset such as a jetty. And then we have our building assets. So these are fairly basic at the moment, but we'd really like to put a lot more cleverness into them uh, working with our building team. And then you've got user-defined assets. So these are custom asset types that you define yourself. Examples could be a tree, a painting, a water pump, a car, a computer, a space shuttle, whatever you can imagine, you can create it in Asset Assist. So why are these custom assets important? Well, this came out of a lesson that we learned in 2013 when we did a project for the Tasmanian Parks and Wildlife. Uh, involved going out and identifying, locating, and then inspecting over 1,000 assets. And we didn't have an existing solution for this at the time. So we invested in putting together a solution specific for that project. And it did the job and we got the project done. But the lesson that came out of this was that if Asset Assist had had some kind of a custom asset module, it would have been an ideal tool to use for a project like this and we wouldn't have had to invest in creating that specific solution for that project. Now, over time, a number of other projects came up that also could have benefited from a tool like this, but none of them had the budget to fund the creation of the tool. So over the last number of years, we've developed this tool out of the Asset Assist budget, and we've done that for two reasons. Obviously, the first is for the benefit of Pete and Sherry, because we've seen there are projects that can benefit from a tool like this, um, so next time a big project like this comes along, the tool is there, ready to use, uh, it's no cost to the business, we can just go for it. Now the other reason is to sell to external clients. As we've looked at tenders for big asset management projects, one thing that comes out very commonly is that asset owners want to manage all of their assets of different types in the one system. So to go for these kind of projects, having a custom asset module is essential. So here's an example case uh, from last year in 2018 uh, done at our Launceston office. Uh, we did some flood levy inspections for the Launceston City Council. So we created a flood levy asset type as a custom linear asset and we defined an inspection methodology to meet the client's needs. This involved defining things such as defect types, uh, components, that kind of thing. And we did a mobile inspections on an Android tablet device. So you can see here there's a, a photo that was taken during those inspections on the device and then, then there's a map, that's a screenshot from Asset Assist. Uh, it's a GIS representation of the flood levees around Launceston overlaid over a map of the Tamer River. So this allows you to uh, pinpoint the location of defects and very easily see where the problems lie. So how do we go about defining an asset type? Um, what can an asset type really do? Is it more than just a name in a database? Well, let's look at an example, uh, which is a tree. So the first thing we do is define the asset type itself, and that is basically just a name, along with a behavior that says whether this is a point asset that is located in a single position, or a linear asset that follows a line. The next thing we do is define components. 
Now, this could get rather complex. Uh, the Vic Roads Inspection Manual for Bridges defines around 60 to 70, I think, components that make up a bridge. In this example, we've just created two, trunk and branches. And that's as complex as it may need to be. The next thing we do is define our defect types. Now you can see here that we have two defect types, uh, one called pests and one called rot. Now you'll notice there the problem text, where there's a, a big box with some text in it. This can be really useful for saving you data entry time when you're out in the field. Uh, if you're anything like me, you find uh, typing on one of those little on-screen keyboards on a smartphone uh, challenging at times, your finger always hits the wrong key. Uh, so the less typing on the phone you have to do out in the field, the better. So this allows you to predefine defect descriptions based on defect types. So as soon as you say this is a pest defect, you will get that description. But of course you can customize, you can edit, or you completely replace that text if you want. It's just there as a suggestion. Uh, so you can see there that this uh, pest defect type is relevant to the branches component. Uh, we've given it a condition of three, and we've given it a priority. Now this allows you to say how bad the defect is, how quickly it needs to be resolved. Now speaking of resolving, the next thing we define is our repair types. So here we have a repair type called cut limbs, and it is relevant to the defect type rot. And that allows you to give a recommendation on how to fix a defect. Uh, you can also suggest a repair time frame. So there are three main types of inspection that we support in Acid Assist. The first is a condition inspection, and this is very much like a bridge level two inspection. The idea is that for every component on your asset, you need to assess its current condition. So you'll see there we have columns one, two, three, and four, where one is near new, and four is ready to be retired. It's, it's no longer suitable for service. Uh, we can also do one to five scale. And you'll notice there that you can do a percentage breakdown. So you can say 50% of this component is in condition 2 and 50% is in condition 3. So on a condition inspection, you can also log defects, you can collect photos, all the kinds of things you can do in the other types of inspections. The next type is our defect inspection, and this is a little bit simpler. You don't need to worry about assessing the condition. All you need to do is identify and log any defects that you can see. So this is very commonly done with road inspections. Now one of the interesting things here is that the software can actually be configured to infer and automatically calculate condition based on those defects if it's been set up correctly. Now this is interesting because uh, bridge inspections are often done by an engineer, but uh, road inspections often are done by someone who doesn't have as, as many qualifications. Uh, they may not be comfortable assessing condition, they may not want to because that's not something that's ever been required of them in the past. So using this system, the road inspectors can go out and do the same job they've always done without adding any extra workload to them, but you can get an extra benefit out of it at the other end. And then the third type of inspection that we support is the checklist inspection. Uh, now this is the least sophisticated type, but it's possibly one of the most common ones that you're likely to come across. Uh, often our clients are still thinking in um, quite a paper-based way, and so what they ask for often reflects that. So you can see here a checklist that I've defined with a number of custom fields. Now most of these are checkboxes that can just be ticked on and off to say I've checked this, I've checked this, uh, but I've also got there a drop-down list box and a date picker. So you can define whatever types of fields you want to collect of whatever data type uh, is suitable. And you can define multiple checklists for different inspection types on the same asset. So here's a few screenshots of our mobile inspection app. Uh, Hamish will go into more detail about this shortly. But the app can be run on a phone or on a tablet and it supports the three major operating systems, Android, Windows 10 and Apple iOS. Uh, the Windows is interesting there because it means you can run it on a laptop still. And some of our roads inspectors like to still take the, the laptop out uh, on the passenger seat of the car uh, pull over when they see a defect and they can log it straight away on the computer. Uh, so they they can then have the software on that machine without having to use a phone, uh, but they don't need to be connected to th the main database.
So, uh, you get to the other end of the project. Uh, reporting is very important because this is the deliverable that you'll be giving back to your clients. And we have a number of options. The first option is that we do have some pre-built reports. Now we have these for defect, asset, work order and inspections. This is essentially a dump of the base data that you've collected and can see on the screen uh, into Excel, which is a format that you can then share it with other people. You can further filter or sort the data. You can remove columns that you're not interested in, or you can add your own columns and put your own formula in. Um, once the data is in Excel, it's, it's very versatile. You can do a lot of things with it. Now you'll also notice there, there are some hyperlinks. When AssetAssist creates this report, it also creates a folder and it puts into that folder all of the relevant photos. So as long as you keep the report and the folder together, you can click on one of those hyperlinks and it will open up the photo that is relevant to the data that you're looking at. We also have a Word report. Now this was often used by our bridge team. They would produce this nice document. Um, it could be up to like a 100 page document if they're inspecting a lot of assets and have a nice table of contents or that kind of thing, photos with figure numbers. And they might spend a week producing this document. What we found was most of the data going into this document was coming out of Asset Assist anyway. It was either being retyped or copied and pasted into Word. So we thought, well, why don't we just give you a button you can click and it will automate the writing of this report. And this report is available for linear assets and custom assets as well. We also have a user-defined reporting. So this is based on the Query Framework tool. Now, this allows you to run your own queries against the database without having to know a querying language like SQL. So there are three different levels here, ranging from really easy to use through to uh, quite complex and powerful. So if you see here on this screenshot, uh, this is our preset search. So we're looking for an asset subject. So you can see down the left are a whole bunch of relevant fields to asset that you can filter the data by. In this case, we said, I want to see all the assets that have a structure span material of steel components. So the tool will give you back all the rows that match that, and it will give you uh, all the columns that match all these fields on the left. But you can go into this output tab and then define uh, what columns you want to see coming out of it. Once you've got this data, you can export it to Excel, or you can save it to a file to run again later or share with someone else. Um, now you can see on the right here, here's a screenshot from the advanced uh, version. Now I'm not necessarily expecting you to understand this, but I'm just wanting to show that you can build up some fairly complex queries. So we have one here that is um, pulling data from multiple different subjects. It's combining clauses together with ands and ors. So you can really have quite a lot of power and do something quite complicated if that's what your need is. And if you are interested in learning to use the advanced search in this tool, we do have some quite good documentation in the Asset Assist user manual. But it might be that none of those options really fit what you need for your project, for your client. Uh, in which case, we would encourage you to work with us. Uh, now this could be something simple like just adding uh, an extra column or two to a report that uh, you find helpful, or maybe it's doing a little bit of formatting tweaking, or it could even be that we develop a, a purely custom report for you that matches what your client wants. Uh, we're very interested in working with uh, people in Pitt and Sherry uh, as a team um, to give you the result you need and also to help make the software better. And then that report will be available uh, for next time. All right, now Hamish is going to show us a little bit more detail about the mobile app. Thanks, Adam. So I'm just going to recap a few things that uh, Adam has said. Uh, so the app runs on smart devices and tablets. Uh, it's supported by all three major operating systems. So you can uh, run it on Android, iOS, or Windows 10. Uh, but the app is designed for data collection. But what does that really mean? Uh, you use the app to capture observations and carry out simple tasks. So for example, you wouldn't use the app to plan your inspection. However, you would use the app to actually carry out the inspections that you planned. Uh, you record your observations, you record measurements, and you collate images. 
the app has a simple workflow. Um, so you open an inspection, you go out on site, and while you're doing your inspection, you record your observations. Uh, and then when you finish, you, you sign off. Uh, so there's a bit more to it with the data entry side of things. But in terms of the workflow, it doesn't get more complicated than that. The app helps you enter information correctly and consistently. So consistently, consistency is the key thing. Um, so for example, you have mandatory fields. Unless you enter a mandatory field, you can't sign off an inspection. Uh, you have multiple choice fields. So that limits the data entry that you do for that particular field. Um, the How this is controlled is configured centrally with Asset Assist. So if you want to change that configuration, um, then the next time any device goes out in the field, it will now take on the new configuration. Uh, the app provides you with convenience features for data entry, such as collecting photos. Um, because you're using a smart device, uh, you can use the camera uh, in, in your device and then associate that image with your observations as you're walking around. So this solves a real pain point. Uh, you don't have to take photos with a camera, come back to the office, and then collate all of the images once, once you're back at the office. Um, there's also a camera roll feature. Um, we'll go into a bit more detail about that later on. Mapping features. Uh, so you can, uh, the app has um, a map which allows you to, helps you locate assets and defects. Uh, it also has the Google Navigate feature. So if you're going on site and you don't know where to go, then you can just uh, open the map, open the navigation feature, and then uh, your device can tell you how you get to on site. Um, Another example is the, the bridge group were out in the bush. They couldn't actually see the next um, bridge that they were uh, going to inspect. So they used the navigate feature to actually find that bridge. Uh, GPS features. Um, so the, you can use the, the GPS feature in your smart device to record your, your current location. So in the example there, the, there's a defect, you hit the update GPS button, and then that'll set the latitude and longitude based on your current position. However, sometimes there, there are cases where you can't get to the location that you, you want to record. So if you're um, inspecting a bridge and there's too much water, then you won't be able to go to a certain location. Or if you're out in a big field and you really don't want to walk over there, then um, you can use the drop pin feature. So uh, when you tap on use map, what it'll do is it'll open up uh, the map with a drop pin and now you can pan and zoom into the map and then choose an alternative GPS location. However, uh, probably not very easy to imagine how that works. So um, Jiyong's going to show you the drop pin feature and uh, some other features too. Thanks Hamish. Hi, I'm Ju Young, one of the software developer in Asset Assist. Uh, we'll quickly demonstrate the mobile app. Okay, so you can see the Asset Assist mobile from my device on the screen. So I will open it. And firstly, I will show you the Learn System Levy inspection as an example. The mobile app support adding GIS layer. So you can add your GIS layer on top of the Google Maps. Like this. So you can see the green polylines. These are all the levies on the system. You can inspect all units or segments using the map or list can simply check the box or check the box from this map. And you can add defects from the map as well. Like click this button and you just put the location of the defect and put more details. 
and you can see the new defect has been added. Once you finish your inspection, you can sign off and make sure everything is correct. If there is something wrong, the app will give you some warning. Okay, so I will move to one of the structure inspection. So you can see all inspections on this list and also on the map. And you can figure out which one you're gonna inspect first based on the location. Also, you can use the navigation features So then you can calculate the route you want to go. This means you don't need to leave the mobile app at all while you're on, on the inspection. Again, you can attach defects and also photos. Like this. You can attach photos in inspection, unit, defect, and asset level. And we also support work order. You can see all the defects on the list and on the map. And once you click the cluster, you will see all the defects belong to that location. Lastly, we have a cloud sync feature. You can use your own Office 65. So you can simply download and upload the inspection package from the cloud. Okay, so I'm finishing my quick demo. Thanks everyone. So Hamish, would you like to continue? Thanks to Yong. So signing off. Um, in order for your inspections to be imported, they have to be signed off. When you sign off an inspection, it validates the data. So for example, if you have a mandatory field that doesn't have data entry, it'll appear in red and you won't be able to sign off the inspection. So this is how the app enables you to create consistency. Um, you have to do the minimum correct data entry before you're allowed to import your data. The app integrates with the cloud. So on the device, you can log in with your Office 365 account. Uh, you can then download data directly from the cloud to your device. Um, you, you carry out your inspection, and then when you're done, you synchronize again, and that uploads your data up into the cloud. So there's a couple of benefits to, to this method. So uh, one thing is that collecting data entry is 100% offline. So if you're if you carry out your inspection and it takes a day or a week and you don't have access to the internet uh, that's no problem um, the app will allow you, allow you to do that when you have internet access again you just upload and then the data is available inside asset assist um, so what's interesting about that is you can upload any time you feel like it so if you have an inspection that's in a city for example uh, and you pr you'll probably have internet access the whole time. So as you're going around doing your inspections, you can synchronize any time you feel like it. And in that way, that helps you guarantee that you don't lose your data entry. Use cases. Asset Assist Mobile is for more than just bridges or roads. So for example, uh, the Launceston Levy project. So the Launceston guys wanted to create a deliverable so that they can hand over to the Launceston City Council. Um, so what we did was we um, 
set up the um, mobile app so they could collect their information out in the field. Uh, then they stored the information centrally in Asset Assist, and then they were able to use that to generate a, a custom report. Um, we've worked with Franklin in, in Melbourne uh, for his electrical inspections. So Franklin had uh, a goal to uh, generating reports and reduce the amount of time it took him to do that by 50%. So he's looking for an automated solution. Uh, we worked with Franklin to uh, create this solution. And although he didn't achieve the 50% um, goal, he did reduce the amount of time um, such that it, it was viable and that um, you, the app allowed him to save time. The Westgate Bridge. Uh, so the, the guys at the Westgate Bridge use the software to um, maintain electrical assets. What's interesting about that is that they um, some of their electrical assets are in um, metal boxes or manholes where people have to crawl in. Um, and there's no GPS um, signal while they're, in, while they're inside there. So what they do is they use the drop pin feature. Uh, we set up a, a schematic that overlays the map and they use the schematic to pinpoint a particular location that they're currently in. And that's how they get their GPS location. Uh, we're currently working with the um, airport group. Um, so they do inspections and uh, collect defects. Um, but what's interesting is that they are also involved with the work side of things. So works crew for the airports go out and address the defects um, but i believe it's our role to go out there and ensure that they've carried those um, uh, the works out successfully so the mobile app also has a works module uh, works uh, this awfully similar to inspections you have a work order you do your data entry and then you sign it off Uh, bus shelters. So Andrew Sonnenberg did inspections in Melbourne uh, for, for bus shelters. Uh, he needed to take a, a picture of the top of the bus shelter. So what he did was he got a, an external camera and hooked that up to an, an, his Android device. Um, so he took the, he got a selfie stick with the camera on top and he was able to take a picture of the top of the bus shelter. Uh, and then that picture went into the camera roll. So back in the app, he's then able to use the camera roll feature to pick the photo that he's just taken. And your project here, um, if you think you've got a use case for Asset Assist or, or the mobile app, then uh, we're here to help. Uh, if you've got any questions or ideas, um, we'd also like to hear those too. Thank you. <laughs>